Hello, this is Jeremy, and welcome to another episode of CVTV. Today I'm going to cover the setup, installation, and basic operation of the highly anticipated flow pump from Waveline. The new Waveline Wave Puck is a fully controllable flow pump that moves up to 3,000 gallons per hour and consumes no more than 30 watts of power in the process. The broad water flow movement will encourage coral growth instead of blasting it away with harmful hot spots associated with other wave pumps. With its unique articulating magnet mount, the wave puck can easily get the flow precisely where you need it. The rear of the wave puck has a convex rounded shape that fits neatly into the concave mounting magnet, allowing the pump assembly to gyrate in any direction. The wave puck's low profile magnet mount offers a 25 degree range of motion and the entire pump is capable of rotating 360 degrees. The wave puck multifunction controller allows you to create pulsing or surge effects with its easy to set up waveline mode as well as expected feed mode. Simply set your desired max power setting and its on off power cycles. You can also set the pump's runtime to facilitate night mode by shutting the pump down till the runtime resumes. For all those that desire more controllability, the wave puck can link up to most third party controllers by using the available 0 to 10 volt port. This makes the pump very versatile and almost universally compatible with most system controllers, including the Apex by Neptune Systems or the Reef Angel, among others. So let's get ready for Wave Puck 101 assembly, installation, and operation. Before we get started, let's make sure that everything is included and nothing is missing from the box. The box should include Wave Puck pump, power adapter, controller, magnet mount, base, and instruction manual. Assembly and installing the pump is fairly straightforward. Once we have selected the optimal spot that's not too close to the water surface or it's not pointing to the substrate where it can create a sandstorm, it's time to install the pump. First, ensure that the glass thickness is no more than 3 quarters of an inch. Then we must clean the selected area to remove any film from the surface. This can be easily accomplished with a simple razor. Separate the pump from the magnet base and proceed to carefully separate the base from the exterior magnet mount. Install it to your desired location within the aquarium. These magnets are very strong, so please be careful not to pinch your fingers or have the magnets slip out of your hands. Once the base is secure, we may install the pump head to the base by simply placing the head next to the base. The magnetism will pull the pump head into place. Now you can rotate the pump's output to your desired flow direction. Once the pump has been installed, it is time to mount the controller. Choose a location away from heat, excessive humidity, and never mount the controller over open water. Affix the controller to a flat surface such as a wall or outside the aquarium stand with two-sided tape that can be found at most retail outlets. Please be sure that the cable connections have proper drip loops to prevent any components from getting wet. Connect the wave puck to the controller, then connect the power supply to the controller. Finally, connect the pump to the power outlet and run the pump for the first time. On the underside of the controller, press the on and off switch to turn the pump on. Let's now take a look at the controller and its features. The controller box has an assortment of buttons, a few ports, and a display. Let's cover the two buttons on the left. The L button allows you to turn the controller's display screen on and off. The R button engages a feed mode that pauses the pump for 30 minutes. Now the navigation on the right is comprised of four directional arrows to navigate through the controller's options and parameters, and an OK button to save your changes. The controller has three running modes, option one, waveline mode, option two, VDM mode, and option three, feed mode. To switch between the available modes, press OK, then use the up and down arrows to switch between option 1, 2, or 3. Once you select the desired mode, you can continue to the next available setting by hitting the right button. In waveline mode, we start by setting up the running time. 
If you wanted to turn the pumps on from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., you would set the start time from 0800 and the stop time to 2100 hours. This also means that the pump will be completely off from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. in the morning. If you just want the pump to run continuously 24-7, just leave the start and end times the same. Next, we can set the power or intensity for the pump. You can select from 10% up to 99% max flow. The next setting is power cycle. You can set the pump to automatically switch on and off at different preset times ranging from 1 up to 60 seconds to recreate a surging effect. To run the pump at constant speed, just set the power cycle to zero. Then the final step is setting the time on the controller, which is displayed on the top right of the controller screen. Time is set by using military time and be sure to press the OK button to save. We strongly suggest you start with the constant speed to configure your pump's water flow speed, positioning, and direction of the output flow. This video is more of a quick overview, meant to get your wave puck up and running for the first time. If you would like more in-depth view of the wave puck's VDM mode, including connection and programming, please look out for our upcoming video, Waveline Wave Puck VDM Advanced Control. In addition to the Waveline and the VDM mode, the controller includes feed mode. When activated, the controller will shut down the pump. The pump will resume its previous operation mode after 30 minutes. The length of the feed mode cannot be modified. Well, that's our video for today. If you'd like to learn more about the Wave Puck Flow Pump, including detailed specs, beautiful high quality pictures, and replacement parts, head on over to CoralView.com. If you have any questions or issues with the product, don't hesitate to visit our support portal at CoralView.com forward slash support. Our friendly support reps are eager to help you with any questions or issues you may have. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all the latest product reviews and tutorial videos. You can also follow us on Twitter at CoralView and give us a like on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash CoralView Aquarium Products.